Today I'm gonna to be covering diversity, inclusion, and belonging in this 86th episode of Coffee with Jody. Let me give you a couple of statistics about diversity in the workplace. By 2044, the groups formerly seen as minorities will reach majority status. By 2025, which is around the corner, millennials are predicted to make up 75% of the workforce. That have diversity programs are 2.3 times higher in cash flow per employee. And 43 of those companies with diverse boards have higher profits. There's a real business case for diversity in the workplace. So imagine sitting around a table and asking your executive or your management team, or even your whole team, who do we bring into the organization? What kind of answers do you think that you would get? Then when you look at inclusion, you might say, how do we make them feel welcome when they get here? That leads to belonging, which is the sense that people have that they're safe in that work environment. So diversity is all the different kinds of people that could be in the workplace. Inclusion is how do we bring them in? How do we get them on board? And belonging is how do we have them feel safe? When I look at different companies that I'm working with, there's a tendency to hire people that are like us. However, diversity includes diversity of thought as well as diversity of color diversity in physical attributes or people with disabilities. It can include people of different cultures, different languages. And we find that when there's a diverse group of people in an organization, they bring different points of view, different life experiences, different education, different constraints that they may have lived with. In the past, people were afraid on some level to have diversity in the workplace. Um, there were certain uh, prejudices and biases, whether it was against women or it was against the Negro population or it was against uh, Latins or it was against LGBTQ. And because they, people didn't have experience with these different bodies of people. They were, you know, intimidated. How do I act when I have somebody who's on the team that's autistic or somebody on the team who is uh, dealing with a disability? Thank goodness we've come a long way in terms of our uh, openness and our willingness to, to have the kinds of conversations that may have been uncomfortable in the past happen today with a little bit more fluidity, even when they're awkward. Now, when it comes to inclusion, inclusion is what are your practices to ensure that everyone has fair and equal opportunities in the workplace and that you actively seek to bring in these different groups of people uh, to your organization so that they know a that they're welcome there and b that you are intentional in your pursuit of including people of, of diverse backgrounds it requires those that are in the selection employee selection process to check any biases conscious or unconscious that they may have at the door when they're in that interview, when they're doing the orientation and onboarding of those, of those new team members. Then we have to create that belonging. And belonging is a safe environment. To have belonging really work, it's gonna require that there's education. And sometimes that education comes from, you know, the kind of HR, education, reading, you know, that, that can happen in an organization. But it can also come from the person who's considered a little different 
coming into the organization by sharing what their experiences have been like. It requires the rest of the people on the team to have an interest in that. And all of this comes from the attitudes and the culture and the beliefs of the leadership team, as well as those who are on the team. So if you're interested in creating the kind of workforce that is prepared for the future, that is open, that is inclusive, that creates a sense of safety for those diverse populations, it's worth engaging in a conversation to cause that to happen at your, at your place of business. June is Pride Month. And although we don't have anyone on our team that's an LGBTQ person, I think that pride goes further than that. Um, yes, that was the um, early starts to creating diversity and inclusion in the workplace after women, of course. Um, but that, that set the stage for the kinds of conversations that have brought us to this point where anyone and everyone has the opportunity, equal opportunity to work. If you found this video to be helpful, please like it, share it, and subscribe. And if you're interested in finding out more about how business coaching can support you in this conversation on diversity, inclusion, and belonging, as well as growth and scaling, please go ahead and click on the calendar link below to sign up for a discovery session with me and we'll be happy to explore that with you. That's it for today.